Man, this place bald as hell. Almost as bad as my own head. Someone should put an end to that. Welcome to my big teapot time lapse. Before we get started, I want to say this is the commentary version. If you want the one where it's just the music and the time lapse without my commentary, the link's going to be down in the description below. And without further ado, Let's dive into it. So right off the gate, I really wanted to do the Emerald Peaks theme. I think this place is beautiful. I love the falls. I love the sort of plateau aesthetic with the way that like so many of the zones actually have multiple islands to them as opposed to just one really massive landform. And I figured what I wanted my overarching theme to be was a restaurant, sort of like a bar and grill. My own take on, I don't know, maybe what the cat's paw looks like inside, right? So before we actually make the inside of the building, uh, right now I'm just fleshing out the courtyard, the outside, and admittedly it's not very original, and I think there's definitely a lot of room for me to go back and uh, remix a lot of these elements to make something super, super unique, but basically the, the core elements that I knew I wanted was I wanted a bunch of fountains, I wanted to use the flowering shrubs because I think they're so pretty, especially because the fountains already have flowers that are all around them. And then I knew that I wanted a bunch of street lights, uh, the ones I'm setting down right now, to kind of lead up to the entrance. And the idea behind this all was there's this town about 40 minutes away from where we live called Frankenmuth, which is this really cool old Germanic town. It's got a lot of that really classic architecture, which actually looks one to one like Mondstadt because they're both based off of the same region in Germany. And specifically, there's this restaurant called Zenders, which is this really old fashioned Bavarian inn. It's super, super cool. I always go there for my birthday and it's really ornate on the outside. They have a bunch of really pretty gardens and landscaping along the outside. That's kind of reminiscent of the furnishings that we have here in Genshin. So that was kind of like the main inspiration behind the stuff that you're seeing me put down. As you can see, I really didn't have nearly as many courtyard fencings as I thought I would need. So a little bit later on, we're going to have a little bit of a shortage of birchwood, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Right now, we basically have the base sort of outline of what the aesthetic's going to be put down. Uh, right now, I'm just putting down some landforms behind the mansion just to give a little bit more depth and to give some kind of backdrop. I'm gonna put a bunch of trees and stuff just to give more shrubbery and uh, some foliage to kind of accent the building and all that fun stuff. Really basic stuff. I'm not really doing any insane clipping or anything here. Cause again, honestly, I feel like the main attraction is what's inside the house, not necessarily what's on the outside. So I'm lining up the courtyard, framing it with those really big mature Suiha saplings. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but th those ones, you know the ones. I think they're really pretty. It'd be nice if we had more big, big tree variants. Cause really we only have these ones and then the really large red and gold leafed uh, leeway tree. So it'd be cool if we had maybe one or two more variants that are that tall that expensive, but eh, they still get the job done. Bring the outside with some more shrubs just to kind of break up the monotony of the re repetitive pieces. I feel like it goes a long way just to give the outside a little bit more depth. Here I'm putting some more ornaments on either side, some grapevines on the left hand side, a little cartwheel to, eh, so anyway, hey, maybe this tavern makes its own wine, perhaps, <laughs> with its three grapevines, you know, produces a lot of grapes for boy. What can I say? Around these parts were just built a little different. A little well on the right hand side and uh, it's a little stationary by itself maybe a little light post to guide the poor sops uh, away when they have to go and refill the water here i'm putting some shrubs along the outside i thought maybe this alternating green red pattern would look kind of neat but honestly i feel like there's just not enough red for it to really look good in that way so I ended up repurposing them also ended up just pushing the fountains and the shrubs all the way back in the corners so that there's less empty space around the fountains i feel like that just looks a little bit better right here i'm actually clipping in the red shrubs into the benches so that they're better like framing it. I have a whole video that's dedicated to that tech specifically and how it works. So if you haven't seen it yet, I'll just, I guess, put it in a card over in the right hand top hand corner. Right here, I finally ran out of Birchwood. So finally on the big hunt, where the fuck is it? Ah, ah, Don Winery, it turns out. So <laughs> did this for literally about 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and just cut it right here. I think you get the idea. I got a big restock going on. I think I still have like 200 stacks even after I made all the rest of the courtyard fencings. So that worked out pretty nice. But with those last ones in tow, that is all the courtyard pieces that we need. Now I'm trying to figure out if I can actually clip the courtyard into the mansion, but turns out you can't do that. It's one of the very, very few things that you can't clip an object into. It's the main mansion and it's any companion character. Although the companions do have a workaround to clip them into things. Again, all that info is in that one guide video that I linked previously in the card. 
Right now, I'm just trying to figure out exactly how I want to space the street lights. Also trying to decide if I actually want to keep those green shrubs in. I end up ultimately deciding to just can them. I want more walking space, especially because after we put down all these little shrubberies, uh, just kind of, you know, flesh out the ground space, especially outside the courtyard, make it a little bit more unruly. Put down some crates, some barrels, the big restaurant supplies, all that fun stuff. I just decide that uh, the shrubs are just taking up a little bit too much space, especially because I want to have a central piece here in the middle. And I ended up deciding just a simple tree boxed in by those flower pots. It's a little off center, so scoot it to the right. There we go. And then finally I realized, okay, yeah, if I want uh, enough walking space, I need to clip all of these lights into the shrubs themselves. Also, I'm just going to go ahead and nudge the shrubs over to the right-hand side, just so that everything is more or less perfectly symmetrical, at least with the fountains and the shrubs. So, all those are lined back up. And that is about it for the courtyard. Two more trees to uh, fill in the empty spaces in front of the fountains. I play around with some of the different tree types to see if uh, the center one is the one I want to go with. I also rotate the trees on the outside, just so they look a little less monotonous. And the final result is as follows. Again, really basic, but it gets the job done, and especially at nighttime. Still very pretty, but the real piece of the resistance, which <laughs> honestly this build isn't even really that impressive to begin with. But you know, the main reason why I was wanting to make this realm to begin with is the interior and specifically the main hall, which is going to be the enormous bar and lounge. Ended up going with the Favonis office tables for the countertop. I really love the way that they look. They give it really that sort of old fashioned Chicago bar kind of vibes. Fun fact, one of those really old fashioned sort of deep dive bars uh, over in Chicago was actually the very first place I ever had my first official drink when I turned 21. So it's kind of the vibe that I wanted to recreate here. I'm just a crook. I'm just, I'm yoinking from Frankenmuth and I'm yoinking from Chicago. That's my big move here. But here's my thing, right? I love the aesthetic of Angel Share. I think the tavern is so heckin' cozy in Genshin, but <laughs> I feel bad for Charles. That poor man has so little counter space to deal with. So, of course, for the cat spa, which is canonically what this is, obviously, obviously, I need to give Diona, my queen, the room that she deserves. So we're gonna make a countertop that stretches the entire length of the room, more or less. I really love these Favonis office tables because when you clip them in together like that, they really do just look like one continuous structure. And it's easy enough to just cap off the ends with the square tables. Even though they aren't the same shade, I feel like almost in an ornate way, they just still really fit well. And they almost give the vibe of one of those lifting up panels that, you know, like uh, restaurant staff use to lift up and then go behind the counter. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out how to fill in the rest of the space. I know for a fact behind the counter, I want to use as many furnishings that have bottles and other bar aesthetic-esque things. But in terms of like this entryway, I can't really make up my mind. First, I'm thinking, okay, maybe I put some bookshelves down, but it doesn't really fit like a bar aesthetic especially for an entryway. I, I, I went pretty heavy with a lot of rugs in front of the doors, but those orange ones really don't fit with the aesthetic. I really love this. This, <laughs> this collage of paintings almost gives me a sort of Applebee's vibes. Uh, Krabby on Monday's vibes, honestly, right? Over here, I'm trying to block off the space uh, behind the stairs. I just don't love how open it is back here and I'm trying to like maybe I can put some shelves back here or a screen or something ultimately end up just scrapping all that but here I'm like okay you know what instead of the bookshelves and instead of having a hearth here let's just put down some seating this is a restaurant right and I feel like most bars across from the bar usually that's where like the smaller sit-in tables are it's not like the main dining booths or anything but it's where like the couples and stuff are sitting across adjacent from the bar so that was the idea behind there no shelves get them out of here couple lamps to frame the doorway, a little uh, mood lantern over there in the corner. My final uh, table, but <laughs> I am very sorely lacking in chairs. I ultimately, at the end of this, ended up with 36 of those arch back chairs. <laughs> it was just an obscene amount. I started with 85 craft vials stockpiled, and I ended up with, I think, 21 at the end of this. Also ended up using some of these screens to kind of block off the entrance to the kitchen, really make it so that the bar itself feels like just one long stretch instead of stretching back uh, over to the kitchen. And I really like the way that that kind of blocked off and segmented the room even more. Plus, it's just really aesthetic. I love the way that the screens look in this game. 
Struggling with my furnishings, thought I'd have Amber out at first as the Witch Staff, but it just makes way more sense to have Diona out. And the final result is as follows. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. Both day and nighttime, I think the bar lounge area is so aesthetic, but I feel like you can't have a really massive restaurant area without some kind of conference area, right? A little conference center for all those business brunches and whatnot. The big Zhongli meetings where he just pawns off all the bills to Hu Tao and well, really anyone adjacent to him. So we're going for a little bit more of a classy formal attire. The cushioned chairs, the big bookshelves framing. It's honestly a little bit of a boring room. There's not really anything revolutionary happening here, but a lot of this Monsat stuff just looks very nice and aesthetic, so. Had to make a couple more of the chairs. Frame it with a rug, and that's about it, really. That really cool tall screen in the center to kind of frame the whole room and the teapot just, you know, because people are probably sipping on their brews. And that's a wrap. The kitchen is also similarly not that crazy. My initial thinking was, ooh, I'm going to use one of the bigger, really wide rooms for the kitchen. And then I'm going to have a bunch of stoves and like a really long countertop, kind of like the bar as the sort of serving area. But then I was like, oh, this one new Mexico shaped room in the Monsite Mansion is just so wonky. It's so hard to work around. Uh, maybe I'll just make that the kitchen and just make it more of like a standard sized. It ultimately ends up working out. I also uh, actually forgot to get the footage of this. I'm making a countertop off of these, uh, I think that's fir wood counters, but you actually can't put any ornaments on them, which is so dumb and weird. So I ended up swapping those out for the shorter uh, birch tables, I think is what they are. Of course, Shang Ling's got to be there too. And the final piece of the resistance is uh, one of the alchemical things. I like to think of it as maybe an espresso machine <laughs> or something. But of course, this being a restaurant, we do have to have some actual proper dining arrangements. And by that, I mean like three tables. <laughs> Let's see, four each. So very accommodating around these parts. Let me tell you, all right? Putting screens in each of the corners to kind of angle off the walls just a little bit, kind of give it more of a unique room shape. You can see I've run into the issue yet again where I just need so many more of those pine back tea chairs. I really love their aesthetics and I feel like for the restaurant, they just fit the vibes perfectly. I was also totally guessing on how many I needed to make. Turns out I needed 11 and I got it right the first time. And let me tell you, I was popping off. That centerpiece with the two tables, the screen and the two plants is actually a centerpiece that I ripped directly from Chinsei Village. You know, the big pavilion with the really sad grandma. Yeah, it's literally just that. I just remade it. So a couple rugs actually ran out of of room and had to yoink one of the paintings, but it turned out pretty nice, both in daytime and at night. But now is when I was like, hmm, <laughs> what else can I do? I'm running out of ideas. Oh dear, oh lord. Also, you can see there, I was actually struggling to get an object to clip the screen into the other. So I placed down some temporary ones just so I could actually more easily shake it through and then clip the screen into the other screen. Using the Hilly Churl event furnishings, I I both love the way that they look and also don't love the way that they look because they're so garish and so over the top and don't really fit with anything else outside of the items that are in that set. But for a sort of like stage area, right? A little like prompt platform for singing and whatnot, hanging out with homies, I put in a bunch of stools, uh, and actually I ended up even off screen. Uh, I went back into the uh, teapot and I was able to fit in, I think 12 stools and two couches. So there's the couches, clipping it into the side table to get them framed up. Now you could think of this as just a karaoke room or maybe you could see it as like a VIP room. All I'll say is whatever happens behind the store stays here, especially between these two. And the last final secluded room. I could have made this another dining hall and I feel like canonically that's just what this would be, but I felt like it would be boring to just do another copy paste room or even, you know, if I, I did a different dining arrangement that just have more tables and chairs arranged in slightly different way. Just feel like that wouldn't be that exciting. So instead I figured, hey, they probably gotta do taxes. 
probably got to pay a little paperwork, give a little splooge to the old Favonius Knights and whatnot, because obviously this is being helmed by Jean and, uh, and the company. Thematically, I want like Amber and Noel and Venti and Jean to all be the ones that are helming the building. So I guess that wouldn't really make this the cat's paw in that sense, but eh, don't worry about it. Basically, what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to uh, accent the center bookshelf piece with some angled pieces just to give it a little bit more of a different vibe. At first, I was thinking like, oh, yeah, I'm just totally going to have this really long central desk. Uh, and I do like this asymmetrical shelf there that I clipped into the right hand side of the bookshelf. Uh, really perfect spot to put some additional ornaments and stuff and kind of break up the monotony of a perfectly symmetrical room. But with that center desk, honestly, it's just a little too much. And I ultimately ended up getting rid of the two chairs that are in front of it and opting in instead for more decorations on the side to the bigger bookshelves and then making an L desk out of the two Favonius uh, office desks. I just know personally, if this was my workstation, I would much prefer having the L desk that's also part of the bookshelf as opposed to that like crazy wide desk. So it worked out really nice. And here we have the second floor and the final area of the interior. This one's also pretty basic. It took me a while to figure out what exactly I wanted to do. At first I was like, oh, maybe I can block off this inner central part to really make it feel like it's still just the interior of uh, its own part of the mansion. But then I didn't really love that. And I, I think I liked the idea more of having tables along the inside so that you could actually look down off the balcony and then see the lower floor too. So I ultimately ended up getting rid of most of those bookshelves, just keeping the ones that are uh, outside the Favonius like office area. I felt like that was still pretty fitting to have those in front of there. I was also like, ooh, I could block off one of the sides of the uh, like the circle so that it's basically just one continuous hallway as opposed to like a circular pavilion or whatever. But ultimately decided eh, for a restaurant that's kind of inconvenient. So end up scrapping that too. Also playing around with some rugs. But again, I think the orange rugs are just not the vibe. They have their time and place, but for this teapot, it's just not the move. So here I'm setting up the live music area. Got a little harp, got some screens to ornately designate it as the music area. Again, I'm totally out of chairs and tables. Oh, it's so many. I think this was the final session where I was building them, and I think that was when I got my grand total of 36 of those pine-backed tea chairs. But setting them all along the edge of the balcony, again, the idea being, you know, any of the customers can look off the edge and then see the other customers on the first floor. Look at Diona shaking up her drinks and whatnot. Again, ended up uh, unblocking off the one side of that so you can actually walk around the full perimeter. Lanterns on top of the table. Venti, of course, has got to be the boy helming the big music. Although I guess Barbara could probably still do pretty well too. But but Barbara's in charge of VIP room, okay? She don't get a choice in that. Clipping in the table so that the uh, the lounge boys have a little, little something, something to put their drinks on, perhaps. Some lanterns to set the mood. And of course, we got to have Amber as the waitress. We didn't even hire Noelle. <laughs> she just kind of showed up one day and we were like, oh, yeah, yeah, hey, free labor. And it's pretty cozy. Again, nothing too crazy, but I like how it turned out. And that is the entirety of the interior complete, but we still have like five different zones to completely deck out. So the first one that's right outside of the, the restaurant is the sort of marketplace area. The big bustling Mondstadt Bazaar. I'm gonna be doing a lot of clipping here. Uh, what I'm trying to do with these trees is to kind of insinuate like ivy or leaves and stuff growing on the building itself. If you actually look through Mondstadt, so many of the buildings there, actually almost all of them, have some form of ivy or flowers or plants growing all along the walls uh, and it'd be really nice if we had that kind of uh, flexibility with like ivy and stuff for ourselves we don't but clipping trees in is like a kind of close second not really but a distant second maybe is the better word for it now here i'm putting buildings on top of landforms and then using those to then clip the buildings into the ground ones and the idea here is i'm trying to gradually 
uh, get them higher and higher up so that the further back the buildings are, the higher up they are, and it just gives more depth and makes it look like it's more of a bustling city than it you know, really is, because behind it, it's just going to be completely blank space. This is one of the bigger plots of land uh, here on Emerald Peaks, and I think it's very important to limit the amount of space you actually have to work in and walk around in, because this is actually only one half of the plot. Emerald Peaks is unique because it has multiple plots within like one subregion, and both of those plots share the same load, which is kind of annoying. So I think the more that you can really limit that space, uh, the better, because it's really hard to actually fill it in properly. Here I was playing around with different stalls and stuff. Ultimately, I might go back and try to add more in in some way, because I think it would be nice to have more shops and stuff. But for the time being, I really just want to make sure that the buildings themselves were all situated. Love having the, the windmill as like the highest peak really gives a nice little landmark. And you can see that windmill from basically anywhere in the teapot. It's really cool. On the opposite side, I'm placing down some uh, very bare bones fences. I want to kind of have like a mini park area that overlooks all the waterfalls and stuff on the opposite end. I basically wanted to keep it open so that way the view of the waterfalls and the rest of the teapot wasn't being covered up by all the Monset buildings and all the fun stuff. Maybe just by a couple trees, a couple light posts to just kind of guide the way. And then of course, just to flush it out some more, some random shrubs to dot it here and there to break up the monotony that is the copy paste grass. And uh, ultimately, that's about it for the marketplace. I'm just lifting up the windmill one more level so it's even more visible. And then uh, I'm actually rotating this building out to give it a little bit more depth and to break up the monotony of the buildings themselves. So it's not one just like straight line. And that is a complete market. Next up, it's the old country bumpkins. I thought it'd be nice to have a little residential area, a little farming zone for all the boys who want to make their own tours. Ultimately, I thought, oh, maybe I can have a sort of windmill pavilion where it's a bunch of buildings around a windmill. But then I ultimately decided, hey, actually, wouldn't it be cooler if I just converged the windmill into one of the bigger houses? I think it looks pretty neat, honestly. And at first I was like, ooh, you know what? Maybe I can just go ahead and have the farming plots here too so I can like farm my Naka weed for Yoimiya. But then I was like, wait, I already am doing that on one of my other realms. And one of the unfortunate realities of the farming mechanic is that you can only have one realm progress in time at a time. So if you have all three of your teapot styles with a farmland and you have all of them planted, only your active one actually grows the crop. The other two that aren't your current like active style just kind of stay stagnant in time until you make them active, which is really unfortunate. It'd be a really great way to actually incentivize getting your rank all the way up, and uh, it would definitely help with my Naku weed situation, but I ultimately decided to frame these grapevines in a sort of arcing motion, almost like a Wi-Fi symbol in a way, and I really liked the way it all turned out. And then I thought, okay, maybe, uh, maybe you can have a couple neighbors, maybe one or two buddies to hang out with them. some trees to dot the landscape, and of course more shrubbery to, again, break up the monotony that is all the grass. Playing around with different rocky landforms, honestly this area could probably even use a couple more, but ultimately ended up skimping out on those in favor instead of putting more flowers and shrubs along the houses themselves. Of course, we gotta have some light sources. We've gotta make sure that every area looks both pretty in daytime and night. So, at first I thought maybe I'd be using those Leeway lanterns, but I actually really love those new Inazuma ones. I just think they look so cool. So, ultimately ended up to go back to Tubby and make a couple more of those to replace instead. Yeah, there we go. And without further ado, that is more or less a completed farmland area. Did somebody order a war criminal? <laughs> That's right, baby. It's child jail time. Let's go. I just, I love doing this. I feel like every realm I have now, I'm just morally obligated to imprison my dude. 
What's fun about the straw house specifically is that there is an open section of it with bars over the windows that more or less kind of look like a jail if you look at it from the one end. So ended up framing it with the Healy Trill encampment of the zone. I figured like eight monoliths with a watchtower on each one of them surrounding child so that he's not up to any funny business. I also wanted to arrange the rocky landforms in a way where it's almost kind of like going through a maze when you're, you know, actually going through on foot. So that was kind of fun to put together. There's really not a whole lot to say about this area. It's really just a lot of generic hilly troll stuff. I always like to pair bamboo with hilly troll stuff and I, I'll be honest, I don't know why. I just always do. So next time I do Healy Troll stuff, I'm probably going to try to go away and like wean myself off of pairing the bamboo specifically with them, but eh, doesn't hurt to be a little traditional right here. Putting down some generic decorations, also going with more of the red shrubbery. I feel like that kind of fits for Healy Troll and all their red huts and watchtowers and all that fun stuff. Ended up moving the village chief hut instead of being down there and getting all crowded with the rest of the huts and stuff up onto the plateau that is looking oversighted. it. I feel like that would be the main hilly trail headquarters that are given the closest eye on him. More landforms going to prop up the other hut. Give some more depth, basically, so you can see each one of the huts as you're just looking up and over the entire sub zone. couple trees to frame the view and putting some landforms in the back so that I can prop up the trees and make them just a little visible kind of peering over the edge of the landforms more shrubbery and that's about it the only real last addition is a couple tables and chairs by the riverside because I just think it's so pretty and aesthetic to sit there I also want to make the area right outside child cell a little less bald because again right now the rocky landforms are just really smooth and plasticky so last thing I'm trying to do here is just to clip a tree into the ground kind of near the waypoint and all that so it looks like there's at least a little bit of grass and stuff on top and with that it's complete. We're almost there. The second to last Mondstadt ta town thing again. Did somebody order even more of those same four buildings? Well, boy howdy, sign me up at least. At this point I was like, man, I have no idea what I want to do here. I, I think definitely if I go back to this pot and I try to like redo a section, it's definitely going to be this one. Um, I knew what I wanted to do for the last one. It was just this one that I was <laughs> really starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel. Because uh, also one of my big goals too is I wanted to limit myself from most of the leeway stuff. I really wanted this to be Mondstadt and then I guess a little tinge of like Hilichurl theme too. Which also ultimately didn't pan out because my final zone ended up using a little bit of leeway stuff. But that's neither here nor there. Don't tell anybody. Never happened. Very basic stuff. Just more building clipping. Trees to dot the landscape. You know the vibes at this point. More of those Inazuma lanterns, because again, they are just so pretty and aesthetic. And then the last final piece of resistance. How many times have I said that now? Too many, because I'm not saying it right. We just got to put a couple shrubs to, again, just break up the buildings. I'm seeing a little bit more lived in, like there's actual landscaping stuff. And that is a completed Monset Town 2.0. But alas, as our passions soar just like our elevation and we reach the summit of Emerald Peaks, we make our way to an area I have lovingly referred to as Lionbuck Gardens. Now what's the origins of such an incredible name? <laughs> oh my sweet summer child. 
You'll find out in due time. This is where that one little leeway exception came in. I'm not using any leeway buildings, but I am using the leeway courtyards because I feel like for a Zen garden, it just makes the most sense. These courtyard walls are just perfect for it. Clipping in that one gate uh, and not using any of the straight pieces and uh, kind of blocking out those two diamond windows on either side because of that, but it still looks totally fine. A couple of the big leeway trees to really sell the image, putting in some of those flower shrubs and clipping the last one so that even though they don't technically all fit in, they do when they're clipped in. And of course, we got a dot the entire landscape with those big leeway lanterns. They're just so pretty. They fit the walkway, especially like a glove. We have our pond in the center. We have our big tree right outside the other gate, a bunch of benches to, to sit down, take a gander and just soak in the atmosphere. And of course the namesake itself, the lions <laughs> and their cute little rumps poking in from the outside. What more could you ask for? Some lanterns to dot the benches. I actually had to make a couple more of those lanterns with Tubby and they were the final thing that we had to make. Wrapping up this grand old adventure of ours and completing our 37k teapot. The final product best viewed at night is as follows. It. Admittedly, a lot of the zones ended up being a little bit more generic than I would have wanted them to. I was using the clipping and the landform uh, combining a pretty decent amount, but there's still so many themes and unique ways to combine them that I haven't even scratched the surface of. So I'm definitely highly considering doing another one of these and really trying to ramp up the stakes and make every single zone something truly crazy and special. For the time being though, thanks a ton for watching this entire thing. It was a big undertaking, but I had a lot of fun doing it. And I hope you have a good one. Bye bye.